Hello everyone, I hope you're all healthy and well. Um, this video has taken me a bit longer to get out than I first intended, but um, I am back with part two of this knife project. Uh, if you missed part one, uh, where I made these uh, peripheral scales, then I'll leave you a link to go check it out. Um, in today's video, I am going to talk you through my way of um, repairing this very badly beaten up blade and make it as good as new. So as you can see it looks like someone has attempted to sharpen the thing um, and not really known what they were doing. It looks like angle grinder marks um, but honestly I don't know I just feel sorry for it. Luckily most of the marks are superficial so uh, I can pretty easily sort it out. Well I say easy, I'm going to do it the hard way. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it with just some basic sandpaper and uh, what you'll need uh, is some sort of flat surface. So you can see there I'm using an old tile. I use, I've got a couple of these. I use them quite a lot for sharpening uh, most of my tools. And uh, anything with a basically a machined perfectly flat surface, so like glass or anything like that. Uh, because you can see I'm starting with 120 sandpaper and uh, just getting the worst of the scratches out. So the process I am using is uh, a very common method of bringing metal up to a high finish. Um, actually it's the only real method I can think of. Um, putting it very basically you start with a low grit, um, something very rough. Um, I've got 120 there because that's, uh, that's uh, what I've got available. And um, take the entire surface down to a consistent finish and then you use stages of different grits to take that finish down finer and finer. Uh, you're basically replacing rougher scratches with finer scratches continuously until eventually you get a mirror polish. So one question I'm sure has gone through a few minds at this point is why I'm sanding in a back and forth motion. Um, I know conventional wisdom kind of tells us that we should go in a sort of side to side sort of motion. Um, usually when you see knives being made they are ground in this direction. Um, I've tried to do this before and uh, found it much more dif difficult to keep a um, consistent finish across the entire blade. Uh, maybe it's because I'm doing it by hand which is much more prone to human error but there we go. Um, these blades like the majority of Victorinox knives have full flat grinds which means that from the spine to the blade edge it's a nice flat plane. Um, so this method, method worked quite well. So what I'm trying to do here is um, trying to reprofile the blade edge. Um, it does really seem wrong to do this with a knife but uh, it really is the only way to reshape that edge. Um, at some point the point must have been snapped off and when the previous owner tried to massacre this edge they took out way too much material at the base of the blade so there's actually a little nick out down there as well. But never fear because we're going to completely redo this edge anyway so if it was completely flat it doesn't matter. So as you can see there's pretty much no edge left on this um, so the next thing I do is put a rough edge back on with a file. Um, if you do this make sure that you do it very gently. Um, you don't want to cause more damage and then have to start your work all over again. So I'm using a very fine tooth file um, and taking off tiny amounts of material at a time. Um, trying to keep as even an angle as I can. I don't really care about precise edge geometry or anything like that. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, match it to the other knives that I have. Um, and so it's probably about a one millimeter bevel, something roughly like that. So I always work off of the assumption that if it looks right, it is right even if it's wrong. It looks right, so nobody's going to care. Makes sense, right? Okay, so back to our sanding. Uh, I started with 120 grit, and now I'm going to take those scratches out with 180. Um, yes, this was a lot of work. Um, but trust me, patience pays off. Um, put some music on, or an audiobook. 
except that it's going to take time and elbow grease and uh, just try not to get frustrated and throw it out the window. That's a feeling I've had a lot of times during this project. Saying that, I do cheat a bit and um, I use Abronet or Autonet. Um, this stuff I use a lot at work and I'm pretty obsessed with it really. Um, What's nice about this stuff is that um, it's very aggressive. Um, so although this is 400 grit, it will eat 180 grit scratches quite easily. Um, so basically I can skip several grits at once. And I'm kind of contradicting what I said earlier, but why the heck make your life harder than necessary? Um, use what you've got. If I had a belt grinder, do you think I'd be using this method in the first place? Mm, probably not. So as we are going finer, we are heading into the wet and dry paper territory. Um, if you don't know what wet and dry paper is, um, basically it's a name given to microgrit sandpaper that is often used with water to start polishing surfaces. Now I am a little bit limited on what wet and dry papers I've actually got so um, I started with 400 which is what you see there and uh, then worked my way on to 1200. That's a bit of a, more of a jump than I would uh, like but um, it just requires a lot more work on the 1200 grit basically. This I believe is at 1200 grit so as you can see it's starting to get a bit of a shine and a bit of a reflection in it. Um, so the next thing we're going to try and do is um, address the edge. So I'm constantly comparing it to um, other blades that I have. Obviously I know if you're trying to work on the only knife you have that's not really an option for you but basically if it looks right it is right. So on the edge I'm going to start with 400 grit, as you can see I'm still doing a back and forth motion even though it is the edge. Um, just to begin with because uh, we've still got that very rough grind from the um, file on there that I kind of want to get the worst out of to begin with. Now to be fair this is, might be where some people might leave it, um, it is you know, a decent enough knife at this point to uh, cut paper. Um, but looking at that, it does look a bit pathetic, so I'm going to take it down to more of a razor edge. So I am going to go straight to 1200 grit paper and uh, use a stripping motion to get a nice, smooth, polished edge. This also allows the microscopic scratches on the edge to align in a way that gives you tiny teeth. Um, <laughs> that are meant to help with cutting, or so the theory goes. Um, I could have that completely wrong. Never mind. Um, anyway, some people get really particular about the perfect edge angle and geometry at this point. Um, I don't. As long as it cuts nicely and the edge doesn't disappear after very little use, um, which if the metal is decent it shouldn't do really, um, then I don't see a point in getting all fussy about it. So at this point I take a pause on working on the edge and uh, go back to polishing the sides. I'm just using very um, standard, easily found um, auto sole, um, covering the blade like there and just polishing away. It's just rubbing it down until you, you get a mirror finish. Um, now ideally I would have liked to um, take it up to about 2000 grit on the wet and dry before doing this, um, but I don't have any. If you are going to do it this way, uh, please, 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 please um, make sure that the blade is away from your hand. So I'm making sure that the spine goes in to my fingers there, you can kind of see what I mean. Now I just feel like I'm flip-flopping back and forth here, but <laughs> we're going to go back to the knife edge. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick trick. Um, if you don't have a proper leather strop, you can just use a um, chunk of wood. And a lot of people use the solid um, polishing blocks that you kind of rub on there. Um, you can also just use just auto sole like I did there. It works surprisingly well. 
Now I should mention those solid blocks of polish don't contain any solvents, autosol and most tube polishes do. So if you use those on your leather strop, they will wreck it. So at this point we are pretty much done. Um, here's a quick before and after. And of course everybody now wants to see a cutting test and see well, how sharp I've actually made this. Had to clock it up last second, didn't I? So I hope you've enjoyed these two videos. Um, I hope they've um, at least been somewhat educational. <laughs> um, so as promised in the last video, I do have a competition to um, win one of these. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it yet. So um, <laughs> if you look at the description down below, you'll be able to see um, a link to my Instagram page and I will be doing it from there. For obvious reasons it will be only for over 18s. If you'd like to purchase one of these knives uh, then let me know. There are three for sale. One of the five is already promised to a good friend of mine. Right, I'm off. See you in the next video.